Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. So today we're gonna talk about some more broken things and some more money. So recently we shared with you guys how much it costs to get this RV and that truck and to go full timing. $187,416.80, and that was a very big number. And then we followed it up with a video about how much it costs to live full time on the road. $172,788.09. That was also a very big number. Now you might think our biggest expense while living full time on the road would be RV parks, our diesel, our groceries, our adventures. And if you thought that, you would be wrong. Our biggest expense while living full time on the road has been the maintenance and repair of this RV and that truck. And today we're going to dive into all the things that we've had to fix and repair on this RV, as well as all the costs associated with taking care of both those things while living full time on the road. Remember, our electric XP 3.0 e-bike contest is currently going on. You have till April 20th to get yourself in to win your very own electric XP 3.0 e-bike. All you gotta do is head over to pavenewpass.com and get yourself some merch, or check the link in the description below for all the ways you can enter your very own electric e-bike. See ya. When we went full time, we tried to budget for every single expense. And we did have a budget for maintenance, but it was way, way, I mean, way down there at the bottom of the list on our monthly expenses. We had no idea that that category would end up being the biggest monthly expense we would incur while living full time on the road and this RV and that truck. And that's because we failed to recognize that if you live and travel full time and move often, you're gonna incur more repair costs than just simple maintenance on that right there and that truck over there. We're gonna talk about every single maintenance, repair, and upgrade item that happened on our full-time journey. Now we did do some upgrades prior to moving into it, but today is all about everything that happened from day one when we started our full-time journey two years ago. And we're gonna start with the truck. Oil changes. If you live and travel full-time on the road, you're gonna rack up the miles and you're gonna need oil changes. We've had eight so far for a total of $880. Now we go to the Ford dealership for this service because they only charge $110. We use the onboard computer to tell us when it's time to change it. We've gone as little as 5,000 miles between changes when pulling through the mountains of Colorado, and we've gone as long as 9,000 between changes when at home for holidays on break. But oil changes, you're gonna need lots of oil changes. Fuel filters. This is another important routine maintenance thing you have to take care of, especially if you own a diesel. Now we change our fuel filter every other oil change and it costs us $175 and we have it done at the Ford dealership when they're changing the oil. We spent a total of $700 on fuel filters. Batteries. Now this is an expense we didn't plan for because it's not normal maintenance. But our batteries went bad and this truck has two. It cost us $331.14 to replace both batteries in this truck. Hey there. So when we got done with our first trip out west, we realized the airbags we installed on this truck were not big enough. We had the 5,000 pound airbags and it was taking full system pressure to air up the truck. So we decided to swap them out or upgrade them for the 7,500 pound airbags and that cost us $657.56. Since we were upgrading the airbags, we decided at the same time we'd upgrade the shocks on this truck. We went from the stock Ford shocks to the Bilstein 5100s and that cost us $402.99 for some new shocks. Air filters, your truck loves fresh air. And when our first air filter went bad, we decided to replace it with a lifetime washable air filter. That cost us $98.50 because this truck right here likes fresh air. Another upgrade we did was for the Ford Death Wobble. We never had it, but we decided to upgrade our steering stabilizers to avoid it ever happening. We installed the Icon Dual Steering Stabilizer Kit and it cost us $440.65. Tires. After our first year out, we had 44,000 miles on these tires and they were shot. And that's because we didn't rotate them a single time. Because on a dually, you have to take the tires off each rim and move the tires to different rims to do it correctly. That cost us $1,722. Now, this year, we are rotating the tires with every oil change. And right now, we currently have 40,000 miles on them. And it looks like it's going to give us a little bit more life, but not much. We started having problems with our onboard air system and we found out that we had water in the tank and that caused the pressure switch to go bad as well as the check valve to go bad because they were rusted. That cost us $79.80 to repair that. 
After we fixed the pressure switch and the check valve on the air system, we decided to install a remote drain valve so we can ensure there's no more water in the system. It runs over Ford Outfitter switches and it costs us $70. We really paced our bed cover and it was absolutely free thanks to one of you guys out there. So one of you guys noticed I had scratches on my bed cover from when it being folded up during towing. And they said that you actually have a great warranty with Backflip. So we reached out to Backflip, filed a claim, and they sent us our brand new bed cover for free. Truck brakes. This one cost me big time and it's all my fault. I decided to run my brakes a little bit too long. It ended up costing me two new rotors. That's because I ran the front where there was no more brake pads and ended up gouging both front rotors. This went from being a normal maintenance item to a major repair. Cost me $1,184.72. When you add all that up, what's it come out to? $6,567.36. That's how much money we spent on the last two years of full-time living to maintain, repair, and upgrade this truck. Now, y'all want to see how much it costs to take care of this right here? It's a little bit more. We have a washer and dryer installed in our RV, and it costs us $2,865 to be installed by a dealership in Texas. Well, we drove to Florida, and it was our first night in the RV, and we tried to use the washer and dryer, and it did not work. We called the dealership back, and they told us that it wasn't their problem because we didn't pay for the aftermarket service, and we had to go through Splendid to have this repaired. This was actually the best thing about this because we called Splendid and they have awesome customer service. It was an inconvenience, but they came out and fixed everything for free and it cost us nothing to get our washer and dryer working. One of our very first nights that we lived in this RV, we decided to enjoy the outside and we turned on that light, that light, and the one back there. The next morning, we woke up and none of those lights worked. Turns out the bulbs were just bad. So we upgraded to LED light bulbs and we haven't had a problem in the last two years since and that cost us $16.29. As we started traveling more, it seemed like every time we moved, more things were falling apart. More specifically, the trim pieces in our ceiling. So that one, that one, that one, and even that one up there. They all eventually fell down while moving. So another trip to the blue store and $22.40 later, we installed better fasteners and glue and they haven't fallen down since. Our very first time to spend the night in the RV when it was raining, we learned that our slide topper right here on our big slide holds water. Well, when it holds all the water, it's an excessive amount of weight and it actually started pulling the slide topper rail off the side of the RV. So a trip to the blue store and I got some screws and some more sealant and that cost me $19.79 to make that repair. During our travels, we started to notice that the front cap area right here was starting to separate. And that's because they only put one, two, three screws to hold this section together. Well, I already had the screws in the sealant from fixing the slide topper. So this one was free, but we had to repair all that right there and the one on that side as well because they were coming separated. This right here is one of our most expensive upgrades. And it's an upgrade because if we didn't do it, it would have caused a major repair. When we first got our RV, we were having major bed row clearances between the bed of our truck and the bottom of our fifth wheel. And we actually hit several times. We had to manage the problem until we could make the change. But this Gen Y pin box right here cost us $1,513. We found a leak on our Nautilus system, specifically on the back of the hot water heater or water heater for those of y'all that can't handle me calling it a hot water heater. We had to buy new pegs, new tools, and new fittings. Cost us $142.62. We have three AC units in our RV. One in the master, one in the living room, and one in the kids room. And this thing goes through filters like crazy, especially when you're somewhere where it's dusty and dirty like out west. We have spent a total of $510.72 on filters for our ACs. We arrived at the campground one night and we realized that that entire light housing was just nowhere to be found. It was gone. And there was no other damage on the side of the RV from hitting anything, so we don't know why or what got it, but it was no longer there. We ordered one up from Amazon, cost us $17.99 to replace that light up there. We were driving one day, we stopped at a rest area, and our entire underbelly right here was dragging the ground. We made the repair in the rest area and got it to a safe location and installed these angle irons right here to hold it up permanently. That cost us $152.53. Air admittance valves. Those are the valves that go on your gray tanks so that when you're filling with water, air can come in without filling your RV full of smells. We have three. We have one in our kitchen sink, one in our rear bathroom, and one on our front bathroom. 
And when they don't work, you know it because I think the gray tank smells worse than the black tank. So we had all three of our air mints valves go bad within a three day period. So I bought three new ones as well as three spares so that the next time they go out, I already have the part available. That cost me $41.64 for new air admittance valves. This is our main entry door step rail. And one day this cover right here ripped off. So we replaced it with this one right here for $18.37. Along the way, we managed to damage our slide ski right here on our main slide. We had a rubber repair man come out and help us and it cost us $448.94. All of our awning lights started to go out and we have three. One, two, and three down there. And once they start to go out, it gradually gets worse. I made the repair myself and I ordered the lights off Amazon. It cost me $180. We were driving down the highway one day and we noticed our roof was trying to come off the RV. And that's because right here at the front cap area, it was coming unglued and blowing up with air. So it was blowing up with air from the front cap all the way to the front AC unit. Now we managed it for almost nine months because it wasn't leaking yet, but we didn't have many choices. I know you're saying, why don't you get a warranty? Well, we're the second owner of the RV and there's a lot of fine print and warranties. Plus, even if we did use the warranty claim, they were gonna replace it with the same subpar roof we ultimately decided to spend our own money and replace it with an RV armor roof that has a lifetime warranty. That cost us, are you ready for it? Our biggest repair that we had not planned for. $8,200 to get a new roof on this RV after about nine months of ownership. If you live full-time in an RV, eventually you're gonna park your RV somewhere with a lot of humidity. And in order to get the humidity out, you need a dehumidifier. So we got this one right here. This cost us $291.19. The cable for the breakaway switch on the trailer got hung up in the bed of the truck one day and got pulled in half. We went to Lowe's and got a new cable, new ferrules, and a carabiner. It cost us $15.99 to fix that. All right, so we installed a brand new mattress on our king bed from rvmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. And it's awesome, but it led to a repair that we didn't think about. The extra weight of this mattress compared to the stock mattress caused our struts to break as well as the hinges that hold the bed together where it pivots up. It cost us $60 to buy heavier struts and new hinges. I was recently working on my furnace and I thought the control board was bad. So I ordered a new control board. It cost me $93.99. Turns out that wasn't the problem, but now I have a spare part. But while I was troubleshooting, I found out that the fan wheel on my furnace was actually cracked. So we replaced that as well for $11.99. I was inspecting the RV one day and I found that all my running lights on the back of the trailer were cracked. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. And all of them, the lenses were cracked. I think it's due to sun damage and UV rays. So I ordered up a new set from Amazon. It cost me $13.90 to replace all those lenses. Our sink started leaking right here around the drain one day. It was just the seal around the drain valve. So we went to Lowe's and got some new sealant. $9.70 later, both of our sinks were repaired. Every year we do some major maintenance and we pressure wash our frame and recoat it with fluid film. That prevents any rusting. This costs us $121.88. Generator maintenance. Now we don't run this thing often, but we do use it and we take care of it every single year regardless of the running hours. It costs us $188.99 to take care of our generator. Wheel bearings. We take care of our wheel bearings every single year or every 12,000 miles, and we do the job ourselves. It costs us around $100 for new seals, new grease, and a bunch of brake clean to clean and thoroughly inspect everything before reassembling it. Our no cold refrigerator has been great, but we do have a bottom shelf that has vegetable drawers installed on it. And when you pull them out, it opens the lid automatically. Well, that is a piece of plastic that has the mechanism that makes that happen and it broke. And you can't just buy that. We had to actually buy the whole new bottom shelf assembly. That cost us $125.16 to fix the vegetable drawers. Our RV is full body paint and we love to keep it clean. Normally we do it ourselves, but there have been times I've paid someone to detail it. Twice actually, and it's cost me $350. We upgraded our battery in our RV to a lithium battery, which means our stock converter would no longer work. So we upgraded to a Progressive Dynamics lithium converter and it cost us $283.13. These sewer hoses right here, they're not cheap and I've had to replace two for $110. The first one, the maintenance crew stepped on it and crushed it. 
The second one looks like it got a little closer to the weed eater. Either way, I had to replace it twice. The motor in our AC started to squeal one day and it only got worse. We decided to do the job ourselves and it cost us $125.98. We decided to update the interior of the RV and Alicia wanted me to add tile around the fireplace. So we put tile around the fireplace and she loved it so much so that she asked me to put it around the backsplash in the kitchen. So there it is on the backsplash in the kitchen. And we also put it in our master bathroom. This cost us $129.96. Water hoses. I have had a battle with these zero G water hoses. At first they were great, but then all of a sudden they start leaking all the time. Even brand new ones out of the box would leak. I spent $200 plus dollars replacing leaking water hoses. The short time we did have the stock roof on this RV, we had to do some maintenance on it. Now ours came with a vinyl roof, but TPO and vinyl roofs require the same sort of maintenance. You have to reseal it every six months with Dicor, which is a self-leveling lap sealant. We spent $144.49 on Dicor. You always need lube. This box right here is our lubrication box. We have grease, we have more grease, we have dry lube, we have wet lube, and all these lubrications to take care of the RV and the truck it cost us $400. When you turn lights on, you expect it to go something like this. That's what you expect. Well, at one point we developed a flicker and that one right there and we started calling this club momentum because it was strobing like crazy. Eventually it stopped working. Well, we bought new light bulbs off of Amazon for $57.99 and we replaced them ourselves. However, they only sell it to you in a bag of six, which is good because when we replaced it based off the part number, the white hue in it did not match. So we ended up replacing that one right there so they would have matching whites. Now we're waiting for the next set of lights to start flickering and we have four more replacements ready to go. I like to wax the RV and the truck and really it just takes time and commitment. But I have spent a total of $600 on waxing and polishing supplies for the RV and the truck. Bug spray. No one likes bugs in their RV. So we mix up some bug spray in this container and every time we set up, we spray the jacks, the tires, the sewer tubes, and the electrical connections to prevent bugs from getting the RV. We spent $108.84 on bug spray. Tank treatments. We use the Bio Geo method, which is Zep, Borax, and Happy Camper for your gray tanks, Dawn, Borax, and Happy Camper for your black tanks. Now we have four tanks, two black, and two gray. And we treat our tanks before every move, which is usually every seven to 10 days. We have spent a total of $1,000 on tank treatments. One of the biggest upgrades we did in the toy hauler was we needed our girls room to be more usable. So we ditched the Happy Jack couches and we built a bread frame, this one right here, that matches the top one right there from the factory. This cost us $350, but now our girls have two usable queen size beds in their room. Our new roof from RV Armor doesn't require any maintenance at all. The only requirement is you keep it clean. So we clean it every three to six months and inspect it for damage and it's cost us $55 in cleaning materials. Water filters. We had this blue technology R3 three stage water filter as well as the onboard one from Grand Design. We have spent a total of $564.63 on water filters. We never use our rear bathroom, so we decided to make better use of the space. So I built this shelf right here to go above the shower. We store the baby diapers, the baby wipes, the swim diapers, and I add this rod right here to store our winter gear. I also had enough leftover wood to build a shelf or a roof for the top of Buddy's cage so that he is protected from the things on top and we can store things on top without falling in on him. I spent a total of $200 on these two projects. Sanitizing our freshwater system. Since we do live full time, we normally sanitize our entire freshwater drinking system twice a year. That involves bleach and new anode rods as well as a whole lot of time. And we've spent a total of $100 taking care of our freshwater system. We didn't just damage our slide once, we did it twice. And the second time we did a better job because we stepped on the slide when it was in the end position at a rest area. That caused the floor to fall away from the wall and we had to fix the floor and both slide skis. That cost us $605.33. Couch pull handles. These couches have pull handles and they break all the time. We spent a total of $22.99 on couch pull handles. 
And when you add all of that up, the total cost to maintain, repair, and upgrade this RV behind me comes out to $17,725.43. That's a lot of money, no matter how fast you say it. But that's not the total cost. When you add the cost of the trailer and the truck together, that gives you a grand total of $24,293.14. That's how much money we have spent to maintain, repair, and upgrade the RV and the truck for the last two years of living full-time on the road. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope we shed some light over the last three videos of how much it costs to get in to full-time living, how much it costs to actually full-time live, and how much it costs to maintain your equipment while living full-time on the road. Now remember, our contest is still running, so head over to pavenewpaths.com and get yourself some merch and get yourself entered to win your very own electric XP 3.0 e-bike. We love you, we enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.